Hello everyone, and welcome to Decades. In today's video, we're in an interesting little town along the River Dart called Totnes. A town with a reputation for being one of the most eccentric places in the country. According to my father, in visiting Totnes, a weird day is a day in which you don't see anything weird. And I'd expect nothing less from a town that supposedly claims to be twinned with Narnia. But why are we here exactly? Well, the general area of Totnes is home to not one, but two castles. One is the famously haunted Berry Pomeroy Castle, which we did visit and will become a video of its own. But the focus of today's video is the Norman Motten Bailey Fortress located in more or less the centre of Totnes itself. Join me today as we explore the history of Totnes Castle. Of course, before you get to the castle, you have to have a reason to put one there. The earliest verified account of a settlement existing where Totnes now stands was in the early 10th century. However, according to Geoffrey of Monmouth's Historia Regum Britanniae, the mythical founder of Britain, Brutus of Troy, first landed on the coast of Totnes. However, Totnes doesn't really have a coast, only a river is inland. Supposedly, the stone on which Brutus first set foot in Britain is now on display in the town, though its significance is debated. Whilst I'm not one to dismiss a good legend, the first verified account of Totnes existing is dated to 907, with the first mentions of the name Totnes being towards the end of that century. In 907, the town was fortified by King Edward the Elder as he constructed defensive burrs around Devon. After the Norman Conquest of 1066 and prior to the completion of the Doomsday Book, the burr was granted to Duel of Totnes, and around the year 1068 a wooden Motten Bailey fortress would be constructed. Its purpose was clear, to dominate the Saxon town at Totnes, to stand proud on a man-made mound as a reminder that the Normans had come, and this land was now theirs. A feeling reinforced by the views when you look out over the town from the ruins of the Stone Keep, though this was constructed later. After the death of William the Conqueror, now known as King William I, Duel of Totnes lost his land, likely due to his involvement in a rebellion against William II. William II found himself less competent at appeasing the Norman lords than his father was, and the Norman lords were quite inclined to kicking off if they weren't pleased. And you'd be fair in assuming that I've oversimplified that particular note. However, when it came to navigating the consequences of failing to please those who helped him run his kingdom, William Rufus was known to be forceful and harsh. Whilst it's unclear if Duel of Totnes lost his lands due to his support of the Rebellion of 1088, it does coincide with when his lands were confiscated. The feudal barony of Totnes would then be given to Roger de Nonant, and at least for a few generations the history of Totnes Castle would grow uneventful. Later into the 12th century, the castle would fall into the possession of William de Braus, 3rd Lord of Bramber. It is believed this is when the first stone shell keep was constructed. By the early 14th century, Totnes Castle had fallen into a state of disrepair. However, by royal order, repairs were made to the castle's fortifications, including the installation of a fresh shell keep comprised of Devonian limestone and red sandstone. After the Wars of the Roses in the mid to late 15th century, the castle would fall into disrepair once again, though it would find itself briefly fortified during the English Civil War, which was fought between 1642 and 1651. Despite this, however, its involvement in the conflict was negligible. A location nearby would be used for prisoners of war during the Second World War, and that's kind of it for Totnes Castle as far as its history is concerned. In the 1980s, the structure was acquired by English Heritage, who have maintained it ever since. 
Today, it is considered a scheduled monument and also a Grade 1 listed building. Entrance costs £6, and to be fair, it's quite a straightforward monument, being a man-made mound with a circular stone keep at the top. Inside, you can see the outline of some inner structuring, however, nothing really remains. There are, however, two staircases up onto the battlements that visitors are allowed to climb, so you can get the best view of Totnes and the surrounding area. The views are truly breathtaking and I 100% recommend anybody visiting the area check them out. Besides this, you can also spend time in the Bailey where there is a visitor centre and a gift shop. It may look like just a field now, but once upon a time this place was rammed with timber structures and it's enticing to walk around the grounds and imagine the atmosphere that would have captured this place back then. You can also head out a back gate and view what remains of the moat. From here, even this relatively small castle is quite the intimidating sight. So if you do decide to make a visit, don't skip out on this part. I also encountered a cat. How do you make your way up here? How do you find your way here? Where are you off? Now, I don't speak cat, but something tells me he's quite keen on the castle. He's coming up. Off he goes, he's brave. <laughs> he's going up. <laughs> he's actually going up. If this cat can appreciate this magnificent castle's history, then so can you. Though something tells me it didn't have to pay an admission fee. Beyond the castle, the town is quite an interesting place to explore as well. Whilst exploring Totnes's tight sloped streets, you may happen upon the East Gate, an old Elizabethan gatehouse to the walled town that burnt down in 1990 and has been painstakingly almost reconstructed. There's also St Mary's Church, churches are always eye-catching, and the old Guildhall, which is certainly very fascinating. There are plenty of other bits and pieces, but you get the idea, go and have a wander. But that brings us nicely to the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching, we really hope that you've enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe if you fancy it, share the channel with your friends and all of that marvellous stuff. But we do ask that if you do plan to make a visit to Totnes Castle anytime soon, please respect the site. And of course keep your eyes peeled for anything weird. But thank you all for watching, we'll see you soon.